Hey guys, look I'm just putting together a really short video about some of the stuff I carry on my back whilst I'm hunting and also just my clothing systems and how I work all that out. Just want to say a really quick thank you very much to all my um, Patreon supporters and all my subscribers as well. Guys, you keep my good times natural and you keep this channel pumping. Thank you very much. Hey, well, I was prompted to do this video because I got myself a new pack. Now it's um, pretty similar to my old pack in the sense that it's Blaze Orange and it's an Ozzy, uh, Stony Creek one. My, uh, the one I've previously used, it's getting a bit ratty, it's 18 litres as well and I was finding it wasn't really big enough um, to have the gear that I need with it. Uh, this one is 27 litres so it's not the, the largest upgrade in size. Um, but it leads me to my next point is that the purpose of this video isn't just to say this is what I can put in my pack, this is what I do put in my pack, it's just about getting you guys to think about it. Working out that balance, weighing up your needs, the essentials, the little extras that you like to take because um, it can benefit your hunting or just give you a bit of a morale boost whilst you're out there, but also keeping that weight down. Um, I'm a big believer in, um, in ultralight hiking, if you like, but also just trying to minimise weight wherever possible. So this video is more about actually just discussing how to strike that balance, the things that you need as an essential, the other bits and bobs you can add onto it, but also how to restrain yourself with that as well, I think. So I'm also going to go into clothing um, and some of the clothing solutions I use whilst I'm out there, different systems, as I like to say these days. Um, that's just my opinion. Okay, I know there's a million different ways of doing this, heaps of different schools of thought. We're all hunt in different ways as well. So I'll do my best to just show you how I do it, and maybe that gives you guys a few hints. Cool. Well, we'll just have a look at my pack first. I want to emphasize, of course, as well, um, not really a review because I haven't used it yet and um, I'm not into that. I'm not sponsored. Uh, plus, this model I don't even think is available anymore from Stony Creek. I bought it on special. That's half the reason I bought it as well. Um, uh, but still, why not buy old gear? Honestly, like if, if the system works and it's less expensive just because you're not keeping up with some kind of fashion trend. Um, 27 litre pack. Pocket at the back, of course it's got the internals, it's got this um, outside section here and just by the looks of it, I think what it's designed for, primarily, is um, being able to maybe stick a deer trophy, deer skull, um, nose down into that, and with this to clip over the top of the antlers like that, um, I think that's how I was initially envisioned, but also that can work with um, deer legs, uh, extra gear, I don't know, even just stuffing a rain jacket in there, that's all good. Um, the part I was also interested in is side pockets like this. Um, I think they're really handy, to be honest, um, having stuff close at hand. I've also made a rule for myself in 2018 that I don't keep stuff in my pockets anymore. Um, it drags my pants down, it gets in the way when I'm trying to make bigger steps up a hill, um, and also stuff can fall out of them and get lost. So having some zip-up zip pockets on the side, but just as handy as your normal pockets, that's, that's really useful for me. So again, I haven't gone and got myself the biggest pack in the world. Um, that's part of forcing me to keep weight down. That's something I, it's something I value, that's what I want to do. I just want to stay streamlined, I want to stay at my physical peak um, when I'm really trying to bust up these hills, so I'm trying to force myself to minimise the gear and keep to essentials. Um, first thing you can't go without, if you're going to go on a state forest kind of course, is your, your written permission. I always keep it in a, in a ziplock because um, it can get wet out there, just damp, sweaty, sweat on your back even. It's worth having this in a Ziploc bag to protect it. Um, that's that, of course. Second, of course, is GPS. It's um, a legal requirement now, State Forest. And I think everyone, including myself, was a little sceptical and annoyed when it was made a requirement. Um, it just felt like it might be a continuing slippery slope to more re re um, regulation, um, which I don't think any of us are, are keen for. I'm going to be honest, though. I found it to be one of the most useful tools in my hunting, especially in the last six months. Um, just, you know, pin dropping stuff. So my GPS is my phone, just an iPhone, not a recent model, I'm not quite sure what it is, five I think. Um, but the Avenza app on my phone, so that's what I'm using. It's a legal requirement and of course, just to be safe and common sense, I whack it in one of these, um, sandwich bag, Ziploc bag, and I found that if, you, um, if you're careful with it and um, try and squash a bit of the, um, the air out of it, you can actually work the phone, the GPS, fine through the wrapper. So just like that, you know, push it through, it, it senses it all, so that's totally fine. I always, um, well, from now on, I should say, slipping into the side pocket there, 
nice and easy. So in the other pocket, apart from a few other little bits and pieces I'm going to show you in a second, um, ammunition loops. Uh, there's still plenty of room in that pocket for other little bits and pieces as well, which is good that all the ammo is in a, you know, organised in its loops and kept separate, so that's, um, that's how I'm managing that one. Water. I, um, I carry two litres worth and I carry them in bottles. Now, for good reason, I know a lot of people would rather use a camelback. Um, with a little hose over the shoulder and that's, that's common sense, it's fine. I don't know, coming from more of a hiking school of thought, I mean that's how I'm professionally trained, that's what I do for a living. Hiking, guiding and outdoor education and I just prefer to use bottles. I find them really easy to gauge exactly how much you've got left, which I don't always find that easy in a bag, uh, in, the, in the camelback. I've had camelbacks leak on me before, which is a bit annoying, really annoying actually. I also find that um, if I'm on the move a lot and want to refill my bottles from natural sources, um, uh, streams of course, and dams, etc., uh, I could be on one bottle of fresh, I can have another one filled up uh, with a purification tab in it. That's bubbling away at the back, getting purified, I've still got plenty of fresh drinking water. As soon as this is done, vice versa, keep swapping them over. Um, for an average day hunt though, I probably just drink two litres of water worth. Um, I would never carry more than two litres just because that becomes cumbersome and I can't think of any of my hunting areas where I couldn't fill up from a natural source and then purify. So that's how I work with that one. Another essential of course, knife. Um, I'm currently using just one of these boning knives, uh, Victorian Ox. Find them much easier to sharpen than small little pocket knives. Um, I try to use these primarily for meat preparation, and I've got where do I put it? I've got my own little flip-out knife just for general purpose stuff, just as a bush knife. But I'm, I try to say this is for game prep and skinning only. I find it really easy to keep sharp. It keeps an edge to it if you don't grind it along bone. Some leftover sheath from another knife, an old K bar, I think it was, but I don't take that with me because I don't think it's appropriate. That's my primary meat knife. To go with that, of course, um, game bags. Now, these ones I found were really handy. They're just um, American stretchy muslin cloth game bags, like just like a big pillowcase. Um, super light and easy. You put them on the top of a big uh, leg of venison from a red or a samba. They, um, yeah, they keep keep the flies off, keep them clear of bacteria, but also breathable. Um, so that you don't, like a plastic bag, you wouldn't get that um, moisture retention as well as heat increase, which is what, two things that are essential for meat to go off. So these are handy. Only problem I've found with these ones is um, there was a few samba hunts where I had them on a leg. By the time I got back to the house, um, they were pretty ripped up from the bush because um, I had no time to go slowly. I mean, you get four or five Ks with a bit of venison over the shoulder to carry out. You're not exactly... Um, mucking around and wasting your time trying to avoid little blackberry bushes and stuff. It was completely shredded by the end of it. Um, the meat was okay. Uh, just hung it up, put something else on it. Uh, my point is, it was like a one-use thing. Like All of a sudden I paid 30 bucks for three of these and then two of them were ripped to shreds. I still use them, um, but when I'm in deeper bush and I'm a bit more conscious of that kind of thing, I got myself in these canvas bags from Hunt Huntet. Bought at a Kiwi hunting store. Um, yeah, a little bit bulkier and heavier, uh, but basically rip-proof in that respect, um, especially for on a big expedition hunt or something like that. What I've also found it really useful for is just to have, I don't know, a heavy bit of canvas in the bag that I can just, if I'm going to glass for a while or sit down and have some lunch, I just whack this on the ground. Um, so I've started taking this a lot more. Uh, yes, sure, so it doesn't necessarily fit in with my ultralight principles, um, but it's practical for more than one reason, if not this still serves its purpose, just rips pretty easily. Binoculars, of course, these are 8x42s. Um, they don't live in the pack, they live in my chest. Uh, there's a few blokes out there who'll find this funny, but um, head torch. Uh, yeah, pretty handy to have. Um, if you're walking back to your car along a fire trail and it's still light, um, you might have good reason to go home, but um, it also means that you're missing prime hunting time. Uh, so if you are keen, and dedicated, you'll be out there till it's starting to get dark, um, because that's when more animals are moving around. It's prime time. 
that means you'll probably want to walk back in the dark, you probably need a head torch. Also, who knows what can happen? The unforeseen can happen. You can get trapped out there. You don't want to be trapped out in the middle of nowhere in the dark without a source of light. And without a couple of batteries to back it up as well. So, spare to uh, batch, uh, head torch, spare batteries, essential. Little first aid kit. Um, it's got a bandage in there. I mainly think about snakes with that, um, or an unforeseen deadly bleed. Antihistamine, some hydrolyte, and um, some poor, poor cream. I take a power pack um, for my phone. That's just not about the phone, but also staying, uh, keeping to your legal requirements to keep your GPS or um, your phone charged if you're using that as a GPS. Um, it's handy to have. You want to use your GPS. You don't want it to run out. Having one of these is good. Here's a really good hint um, that's been given to me over the years. Parasecateurs. That deals with blackberry bushes really well. And um, if you're in the thick stuff and it's hard to move, but you're on sign and you're following a trail, I mean, uh, blackberry and scrubby bushes like that bothers us a lot more than it bothers a deer. So, yes, you want to be able to get through that, especially in Samba country. These are really damn helpful. Um, another thing I use is a little collapsible, foldable saw. Um, again, we're starting to get into the optional stuff. This is, you probably take either or, unless it's a really big day. Um, Everything has its uses, but of course we're not going to just completely fill ourselves up with every single possibility. We need to prioritise, so um, I do find these very helpful. Also, when you're setting up a game or trail camera, having something like this, just to also clear the view in front of your camera to make sure you don't get that one little stick that, you know, sets your camera off a thousand times a day but doesn't get any pictures of deer and wipes your uh, battery power and your SD card out before any deer walked in front of it. That's happened to me before. Um, yeah, have something like this to take the time to prepare that view. A few little extras just to put in the side pockets. Um, Windicator. Mate Bluey got me this from America. Um, I think they must be available um, at a gun store in Australia somewhere, or at least online, but they're really simple. I think it's just builder's chalk in there. And um, gives you an indication of the wind movement. That's pretty handy. Fox whistle. Light as a feather but um, just can be infinitely useful. I don't know if the deer hunting's not on and you want to get some predators or you might just be out there to get foxes anyway, but I find these little button ones really easy to use, really easy to learn how to make a good sound from them, and um, they're quite effective. They brought in a lot of foxes for me. Last little thing, probably doesn't need to be at close at hand, but <laughs> over Christmas, this little mini tape measure, um, it came in a bonbon, <laughs> but it's handy, you know, gives you the measurement. I don't know whether you're checking out a trap you just caught or uh, want to measure up those 30 inches of a lifetime, but hey, weighs nothing, I'll whack it in my pack. Lighter too, of course, very handy. Look, I might um, talk about food I take uh, hunting on a different video or a different day, because there's a lot of creative ideas there. Um, but I'd just say that you'd always have some lollies and some muesli bars in your backpack just for that quick energy boost you need. I, if you're gonna be out there all day, I don't know, have a good lunch, put a big, um big sandwich in there, you know, don't hold back and some chocolate bars as well just to give you that that push. I, on certain days, have taken a little gas cooker, really light little NSR boiling pot. Um, it's a morale boost, I don't know, just having a hot cup of soup or a cup of coffee on top of the hill like that. Um, I'm not really into backcountry uh, meals, but they have their place. Um, and having a setup like this means that you can quickly just boil it in there, big hot lunch, lightweight. Um, that's an option for you as well, so it's not an essential, doesn't always go in there, but if I've got a really big day planned, I've got this with me. And last but not least, which leads me as a segue to the next part of things, is I would never not have a shell or a rain jacket in my bag. It's not just about rain, it is also about warmth, and for its weight, a rain jacket has a lot of insulating potential to keep you really warm, as much as a jumper out there, um, but for not much bulk in your bag. I'll start talking to you about how I layer clothing, and then we'll get back to the rain jacket in a second. 